I V M. Hey everybody, quick request once again if you could help us out by filling out our survey. It's at ivmpodcast.com slash survey. This really helps us talk to advertisers about the kinds of people listening to these shows. Really do appreciate your help and we're going to be doing a random drawing and we'll be sending out some IVM swag. Hope you enjoy that. Hi, I'm Utsav, a behavior researcher by training and a slow traveler by passion. Postcards from Nowhere is a travel podcast where I condense a decade of travel experiences and explore not just the where, but also the why and how to travel. My stories emerged from slow traveling the less explored parts of the world, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Armenia, Uzbekistan, and even China. At the end of each story, I give practical tips and new ideas about how to travel better. This week, I bring to you the stories of the first people, the descendants of our ancient ancestors, and what lessons does their world hold for us as we draw 2020 to a close. In 2016, a herder, Ali Berino, living in Ethiopia's Afar region, was digging an addition to a temporary goat pen. He noticed a bone exposed in the sandstone surface. About three miles away, an archaeological expedition co-led by Johannes Hale Selassie, was digging at Woranso Mill to recover fossils. He got a call from a state official who was telling him about Ali Berino's find. Hale Selassie was skeptical and asked Ali and the state official to bring it over to his camp. His skepticism was soon to be declared unfounded. Berino had found a maxilla or upper jawbone belonging to an ancient hominin. He hurriedly walked the three miles to check out the place himself. Just feet away from where Berino had found the maxilla, Hale Selassie soon spotted what turned out to be the most of the remaining skull. I did not even pick it up, he said, and I started jumping up and down. The official looked at me and told his local friends, What is going on with the doctor? Is he going crazy? It's a skull the world had been waiting for. Hominian skulls, are these exceptionally rare treasures and to find one this old and this complete is almost unprecedented because it turned out to be the skull from the dawn of human evolution. Thousands of miles away, scattered across the South African region, live the San peoples. Their territories span Botswana, Namibia, Angola, Zambia, Zimbabwe and South Africa. But they are only about 100,000 in number. They live in the most punishingly hot places on the earth, the Kalahari Desert, and are more popularly known as the Bushmen of the Kalahari. The Bushmen are the remnants of Africa's oldest cultural group, genetically the closest surviving people to the original Homo sapiens core from which the Negroid people of Africa emerged. They are also known as the first people. They could very well be the closest descendants of the hominin found in Ethiopia. We are literally talking about the most direct ancestors of the first Homo sapiens. They are amongst the last hunter-gatherer tribes existing in the world. One of the most studied aspects of San culture is the rock art depicting myriad scenes. San rock art images are complex panels, some of which stretch into meters. It often features the medicine dance led by a shaman. However, for the untrained eye, one does not know where to start looking. Should one start at the left and move towards the right? Or maybe the other way around? Maybe the panel of many images does not have a beginning and an end in that sense. But if one were to overlay these paintings with the San people's belief about the cosmos, it would provide us with lessons from our most ancient ancestors. The San recognized three cosmological levels. In the middle, was the level on which they lived their daily lives, hunted animals and gathered plant foods. Above was a level of spiritual things. Here were the trickster deity and other spirit beings, all of whom lived alongside God's vast herds of animals. Below the level of daily life was a subterranean spiritual realm, accessible by the means of holes in the ground, cracks in a rock face and water holes. It's here underwater dwelt the rain animal and the other spirit beings. 
But what if I told you that the entire cosmological construct was a reflection of the landscape around them? The tiered sand cosmos can be superimposed on the soaring Maloti and Drakensberg mountains. The mythical chief of the San people, Kwansi Kutsha, lived in a place enclosed with hills and precipices. And there was just one pass, which was constantly filled with a freezingly cold mist so that no one could pass through it. These are the Little Berg, a series of massive spurs characterized by sandstone cliffs and rock shelters. Above them, the High Berg rises steeply to as much as 11,000 feet. In the Kwansi Kutsha myth, the high mountains are separated from the lower lands by one pass, just as access through the mountains till today is achieved only through a few steep-sided narrow passes. Often, the passes are filled with mist. At the bottom lies the Sengu River, which became the subterranean spiritual realm where rain animal and other spirit beings dwelt. So, rock paintings, medicine dances and cosmological beliefs. What does all this mean? The rock paintings were cumulatively constructed over many years. They were not planned with a completed form in mind. Rather, they were open-ended and like myths, were made with the participation of generations of painters. The medicine dances by the shamans depicted in these paintings showed that they had the ability to traverse across the three levels of the cosmos. An out-of-body journey, beginning on the level of daily life, could begin by entering a hole in the ground or a water hole and then, after subterranean travel, rise up to the realm above. To me, it put 2020 in perspective. In this history of our really short lives on this planet, never have we collectively felt such a loss of control on our own selves. Many of us fought battles on personal, professional, medical and emotional fronts. It indeed felt like a rock painting of the San people, open-ended, unfolding like a myth, with a whole host of painters deciding our destiny week on week. The physical restrictiveness of the pandemic allowed us to behave like the shamans, switching roles and traversing realms. Much like the San people, our entire worldview was a mere projection of what we saw around us. Our landscape, which could once be imagined as the whole wide world, became restricted to a few spaces. But much like the San people, who traced their lineage to our most ancient ancestors, we were able to overcome challenges and see off 2020. Let this be a reminder to you that the rock paintings of our lives are not yet complete. In 2021, May we be the painters who will continue to unfold the myth that is our human life. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Utsav Memory on Twitter and YB Travel 42 on Instagram. I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Once again, just a quick reminder, please do help us out by filling out our survey. It's at ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It really does help us figure out who's listening and, you know, what are the characters that we can go and push to advertisers. That is massively helpful to us. Please, please, please do help out with that. So on the network this week, let me start with a quick milestone. It's the 100th episode of Begin the Journey with Ashish Vidyarthi. Congratulations to Ashish and the team. Great show. If you're not listening to it, he talks to you about just how to approach life. It's just very, very cool stuff. Do check this out. I want to mention the note with Maru Kinaya. She talks about why petrol prices are so high. On the wire talk, Siddharth speaks with Harsh Mandar. On Advertising is Dead, Varun speaks to Kabir Biswas, the founder of Dunzo. They have a really interesting conversation about, you know, what's the future of Dunzo and what they're thinking about. On the Traveling Professor's Diaries, check out Siddharth talk about the performance paradox. I found it really fascinating and interesting. I think that you guys will really get something out of listening to that. Please do give that a listen. And finally, let me mention Zindagi Diaries. It's Ragini Kumar's poetry podcast. The first week when it came out, we put out five poems first week. We put out another five poems this week. And the response has been phenomenal. Do check it out. It's in Hindi. It's a poetry podcast. Something a little different. Do give it a shot and let us know what you think. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. 2020 is a difficult year. A global pandemic, protests, elections, recessions, 
you get the picture. What we need is a space where we can have nuanced discussions about global affairs and foreign policy. That's where I come in. My name is Hamsini Hariharan and I host the States of Anarchy podcast. Every second Tuesday, I speak to experts in the field of international relations to make a little more sense of the world. So join me on the IBM podcast app, website or wherever you're listening to me right now.